I said salute to the untouchable True School Sports Empire. <laughs> That's right, over the untouchable. Not only the South Florida boxing scene, but the worldwide boxing scene. It's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so in the aftermath of Lawrence Acoli's recent WBO Cruiserweight title defense against the great white David Light, you know, IBF Cruiserweight champion... Jaya Opataya, he had a lot to say about this, you know, because this is a potential fight that could happen down the road. And, you know, I feel like with him saying this, it gave me an excuse to talk about him because there actually is some other things going on with his career. So cause to consider this a Jai Opataya update video because I am a fan of him and I do enjoy uh, him as a fighter. Now, Jay Opataya, Jai Opataya, after the Lawrence Coley david Light fight, uh, he went out there and he tweeted on Twitter. He tweeted the following, and I quote, uh, and I quote, Grass growing, paint drying, Okoli boxing, end quote. So he's basically saying those are the three most boring things in life. To watch grass grow, to watch paint dry, and to watch Lawrence Okoli box. And I've watched, I mean, listen, I, I like Lawrence. He's cool. But there's been some times in his career where I watch him fight, and it's, it's like that. If you put him there with a lesser opponent, he's very good at staying within himself and... Sometimes he can make things ugly by the mauling and fouling that he does. So, you know, it is what it is. But um, at the end of the day, as it stands, if you ask me, BT, who do you think is the best cruiserweight in the world at this moment in time? I'd probably say Lawrence Acoli is the best one right now because I, I feel like he's the hardest guy to beat. And on top of that, now I think it's going to be even harder because now Sugar Hill Stewart is going to turn him into a monster. He's going to learn how to really use that, that, that range to box and to more importantly to to get knockouts like like Sugar Hill Stewart like so Jael Pataya versus him is going to be a potential unification fight that's a unification fight that that division needs you know it's, it's been a long time I know Lawrence had expressed to me when I interviewed him that pretty much all these cruiserweights with the belts they don't really want no smoke he's talked to all of them they have all for one way or the other you know not been eager to make the fights happen so make of that what you will but uh J.L. Bataya has a lot of things going on with his own career. I mean, right now, um, we know that he's recovering from a, you know, some injuries that he sustained last year when Marius Breedis, uh, when he fought Marius Breedis. And, you know, he's supposed to fight uh, Poland, Polish, you know, IBF mandatory challenger, Mateusz Masternak. Um, he had to go undergo a, a, shoulder, a shoulder surgery. And this pretty much forced him to file a 60-day medical exemption with the IBF. But that medical exemption is about to be up. And the IBF is more than likely going to order the fight to happen on April the 1st. Which will then, uh, you know, pretty much trigger another 90 days to negotiate. So he's probably not, Jael Pataya is probably not fighting till what, you know, what, at the latest. We're looking at June, July maybe. So... Uh, listen, he's he's got he's got to get the ball rolling because um, as quickly as he got the momentum, you know, due to the injuries and just things outside the ring that he's been taking care of, you know, he, he really doesn't have a whole lot of momentum right now. And he and that power Breedis was was great. Now, about a couple weeks ago, like I'm gonna say, like yeah, like two weeks ago, Opataya actually uh, was in a bit of a contractual dispute with his promoter, uh, Dean Lonergan. And uh, DNL Events is this company, and DNL Events was trying to hold uh, Opataya into a contract. Basically, what happened is that uh, you know Dean wanted to keep him into a, a contract, a contract with his company, and Jai Opataya didn't want to be there anymore because DNL Events uh, had lost their TV rights deal with Fox Sports out there in um, in Australia, so. It makes sense. Like, it makes sense. If you're with the promoter who has a television network behind him, and that's probably the main reason you signed, to be honest, because really, that, really, that's who runs the boxing at the end of the day is the television networks. If he doesn't have said television networks, that means you really don't have a platform to really showcase your talent to the world. And on top of that, the, the, the networks are really the ones who are supplying the money. The, that's where the money is at. It's really with the network. You know what I'm saying? So... 
With that being said, he left he left uh, DNL Events, which is most famous for uh, you know promoting the big fight there in Australia with Jeff Horn and Manny Pacquiao six years ago. Um, you know they 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 went ahead and they parted ways. So it's good that he got out of that contract because if he didn't get, get out of that contract and 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 that would have continued to drag out in court, he was gonna be stripped by the IBF. So that's how he was able to maintain his title. But as far as him and Nicole, listen, it's a there's so many fights out there for Lawrence that I think are great. You know, we had this fight with Chris Bill and Smith that they've apparently verbally agreed to. So there's that. You have um, Richard Reactport, which is a big rivalry fight. But you know, I would say of the of the three of of, the, of those two fights in this one, Opataya, I would say Opataya and him is probably the most important fight in this division because I think both these men have a legitimate claim to be the best cruiserweight in the world right now. Like. Jay Pattaya beat Marius Breedis in a really exciting fight. Marius Breedis was the longest reigning champion. Uh, Marius Breedis is is very difficult to beat, and he did it. So you got you got to give him all the credit in the world for that, Jay Pattaya. Um, so I think that's the fight that needs to happen. If he thinks Lawrence Coley is so boring, then he needs to teach Lawrence how to be exciting. And uh, make an exciting fight with him and, and, and see if he can get Lawrence to box outside of himself, you know. Um, but that's very hard. Because trust me, I've seen I watched Lawrence spar tons of guys when he was in camp for this last fight. Um, it's hard, man. He's really good at what he does. And he's getting better at what he does with Sugar Hill. And he's even adding some things to his game. So that's why I want to see the fight. Because I know, I know how hard Lawrence is to beat in that cruiserweight. And... Um, you know, Opatai definitely has the power, the grit, the size, and uh, the athleticism to, to, to definitely trouble Lawrence. So it should be a good fight. But uh, yeah, that's the news. Jay Opatai not impressed with Lawrence Coley, and he he has gone out of his contract with his former promoter Dean Lonergan and DNL Events. So uh, yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe, and like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take your eyes. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure you subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.